everybody. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. Before we move on to anything, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I know there's a lot of needs that are represented, but we serve a great and mighty God who is capable of meeting every one of those needs. Father, in the name of Jesus, we know that you are good. We know that you are true. God, we trust you in every and all situations, God. We pray in the name of Jesus, God, those who may be sick, those who may be hurting. God, we pray that you send your healing virtue right now, God. That sickness has to flee at the authority of your name, God. We pray that you touch, heal, deliver, set free in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you touch past. Pastor Derek, we pray that you touch Pastor Court, touch their families, touch their wives. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God. And we also pray that you be with us here tonight. Let your presence be with us. Let your word come forth, God, and fall upon good ground and fall in our hearts and bring forth the fruit in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, we say amen and amen. Again, welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. It's so good to see each and every one of you, our church family, all of our guests. Thank you guys for joining with us tonight. It's going to be a wonderful time in Jesus' name. I believe that. Right now is your time to continue to support the kingdom of God through giving. You will see a link in the comment section of this video, and by clicking that, you will be directed to our giving page. Thank you for your continued support for the kingdom of God, for the church, the ministry, and your commitment to spread this wonderful, beautiful truth. Amen. Tomorrow is Thursday, which means it is our weekly prayer and fast day. So let's all bind together. Let's skip a meal. Let's link up together as a church family and a church body in, in uh, prayer and fasting tomorrow. This Sunday, we're going to have uh, our guest evangelist, evangelist with us again, Brother Mark Dross. What a powerful time we had last Sunday, and this Sunday, I'm believing it's going to be just as incredible. Now is the perfect opportunity to invite somebody to worship with you and your church family this Sunday. And Sunday night, we're going to have our family prayer. We hope to see you and your family Sunday evening at 6 as we unify together for a time of prayer and fellowship. But tonight... Now it's time to get into our lesson two of our series called Having the Mind of Christ. Our key verse is Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. A recap of lesson one. We looked at the natural versus the renewed mind how they each look entirely different. We also looked at how we guard our minds. One of the ways we do that, we have to set our minds on the things of God. If we set our minds on the things of the spirit, we will bear much fruit. We also guard our minds through being in constant prayer, releasing our burdens to him, releasing our stress to him. Through the word of God as well, we are guarded. That's why we need his life-giving word speaking to us. Through reading scripture and hearing the preached word of God, you know, through memorization. We also looked at how we have to pull down thoughts and take them captive if they are not in line with what God has already spoken. And we also looked at how we have to take responsibility and action and have to discipline ourselves if we are going to walk in a renewed mindset. If you have not heard the first lesson, the transformed mind, I encourage you to look it up on our YouTube page or our Facebook page because everything starts with that first lesson, the transformed mind, lesson one. But tonight, this is lesson two of having the mind of Christ, which is titled Moving Forward. Briefly, we're going to talk about how the past needs to stay in the past. In fact, the Bible uses stronger language than that. But we are going to look at our past and how it affects us, how we have to move forward and let go of past dealings and the, and the things that we want to remember are the things that God has done and the things that he has promised he's going to do and the things that we have been taught. So those are some things that we are going to try and look at tonight. So let's dive in. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old 
has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So that settles the issue. When you repent of your sins, when you are baptized in Jesus' name and God fills you with his spirit, he makes you entirely new. By faith, you have to receive that you are new. Everything that you have ever done, everything that was ever spoken over you by a family member or a friend that was hurtful and locked you up in your mind, saying that you will never amount to anything, thoughts that your family is filled with alcoholics so you will be an alcoholic, you know, thoughts of it's only a matter of time that you will end up in jail like your father and his father before him. God has done away with that. You are now born again where those things should no longer be a part of our lives. The old has gone. Even the sins that we committed or the hurtful things we have done to others by the cross of Calvary and his blood, God has done away with our past. The blood of Jesus deals with the washing away of our sin. 1 John 1, 7. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. The cross deals with the old man, our past. Romans 6.6 6. We know that our old self, our old man, was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing. So the old man the past was crucified with Christ. Was is past tense, my brothers and sisters. And we know that once Jesus was whipped, once Jesus was crucified, and he died. Once he was crucified and once he died, where did he go next? He was buried. This is very powerful. And we know as believers, when we are baptized in the name of Jesus, according to Colossians 2.12, we have been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God. So just as Jesus died and was buried according to the flesh, our past, our shame, our old thought life, things that were harmful and hurtful to us were buried with him through baptism. You only bury dead things. You don't bury things that are alive. And my brothers and sisters, your past has been buried with Christ. The past should stay dead. If you are alive in Christ and he has raised you up through faith, your past should no longer have any control over you because it's dead. It's interesting that Paul did not say, believing this, our old man was crucified. No, he said, knowing this. That's incredible. I looked this up in the Greek, knowing it's to be made aware of, to totally understand. That it is a fact and we need to know that our past is done away with. It doesn't matter what was said to you. It's done away with. It doesn't matter what you did. It's done away with. It doesn't matter what happened to you. And I say that with all sincerity. But it's done away with. Your past should no longer be affecting your future. And that is just not for stuff that happened years ago or prior to our conversion. That goes for stuff that just happened an hour ago. You know, something could have happened five minutes ago, two minutes ago. And guess what? That is now in the past. His mercies are new every morning and I am so grateful for that that we wake up every morning every day with new mercy and new grace amen because we live in the real world we will not be complete in him until we get to heaven when we, when we will be totally incorruptible and right now this body 
will still take every opportunity. Our thoughts will take every opportunity to go back into the past, but it must remain buried. Our past must remain buried. Don't allow thoughts or people to bring you back to where you were. There are just some people we have to cut out of our lives. And I know that's hard, but if it's bringing us back or causing old thoughts and old feelings to arise, you know, it's going to sabotage our future. It's much easier to pull somebody down than it is to pull somebody up. But what about this? What if we are enjoying our day and nothing seems out of the ordinary? And then all of a sudden we start thinking of a past hurt. It just comes out of the blue. We must stop that thought immediately. How do we do that? We pray in the name of Jesus. I'm not going down this road today. It stops now. Chop it off at the root before it spreads throughout your mind. It amazes me how just a simple thought of something that happened long ago, if we allow it to grow, it's like it transports us back in time and we relive that hurt all over again. That amazes me. I myself had something life altering happen to me years ago. It's probably the worst thing that has ever happened to me. I can go months without thinking about it. And then all of a sudden, it's like it just drops in my mind out of nowhere. And I can physically feel what it felt like when it first happened. Has anybody else ever experienced that before? Or am I alone in that type of situation? But I have adopted what the word of God tells us to do. I say in the name of Jesus, you will not live in my mind. You are not going to disrupt my day. You have been dealt with. I'm alive in Christ and I no longer recognize or will acknowledge you any longer. Sometimes we have got to do like David and encourage our own selves. Sometimes we have to speak life to our own selves. But if we allow the thoughts of our past or past hurts to grow, they will take over us. I don't care how big a bear gets. You know, they can get up to 1,300 pounds, a massive animal. But he wasn't born that way. You know, he started off as a cub. He got that way because he continued to eat. If that cub wasn't eating, it had no chance to be a massive bear. What you feed will grow. Don't feed into your past. Dwelling on our past will not allow us to get beyond our past. But Paul has some very encouraging words that help us to move forward because that's what we want, right? And that's what God desires for us. That's why he renews us. That's why he transforms us, gives us new life in him. Listen to Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. Listen to this. Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. Verse 23. And to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So he is saying, take off the garments of your old life. Let go of your past and hurtful things that were spoken over you and put on the garment of righteousness in the likeness of God. Put on the new. That's what he's saying. Looking back into our past is not something God would have us to do, but it is to look forward in him that now there is new life. That now there is freedom and joy. That I'm not defined by what happened to me or what was said to me, but I'm defined by what God has done in me. My present, 
My future is no longer going to be held captive by my past. Amen. Philippians 3, 13 through 14. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of Christ Jesus. Amen. I will no longer think on my past. I will no longer allow thoughts that were behind me to affect what's in front of me. I am forgetting. I am go I'm not going to allow my mind to turn back the clock in my own mind. Instead, I am pressing towards what God has for me. We need to get our eyes on where we are going and off of where we have been. God is a moving forward God and he wants us to move forward, not looking back, but looking onto him. Going backwards is not what God would have us to do. Even Jesus said, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. In Luke 9, 62, when the man is plowing the field and if he begins to look back, if he's not focused on the task at hand, his plow lines are going to become crooked. But if he is steady with his hand on the plow, his line will be straight to produce a full harvest. Allowing negative thoughts and harboring hurtful words, if God has delivered us from that, if we continue to look back and dwell on it, we won't produce the fruit that God wants us to produce. But if we say I'm moving forward, my eyes are on him, my mind is set on him, we will be fruitful and we will be fruitful indeed. We will be victorious in the name of Jesus. Even our vehicles, they know the least important window is the rear view mirror. But the one in front of you is the biggest one on the vehicle. Because even they know it's more important what is in front of you than what is behind you. The rear view mirror is tiny in comparison to our front windshield. Oh, that we would get the mindset in the spirit that it is more important what is ahead than what is behind. When God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, the last picture we are left with is Lot's wife turning into a pillar of salt in Genesis 19, 26. God was giving them a fresh start, a new life. He spared them of his wrath. But because Lot's wife longed to be back in Sodom and Gomorrah, she couldn't go into her future. Think about that. In her heart, theologians say she still wanted to live there but God was trying to show her something better but she couldn't let go of it so her past stopped her because she couldn't let go of her past her past said okay here you will remain she remained in her past God does not want us to dwell in the yesterday, my brothers and sisters. But sometimes we may say, oh, it was more of a great time back then. I had more fun. Life was easier. You know, we may say things like that sometimes. It, it was better out there. You know, life certainly was not better. But what we do is oftentimes is, is we oftentimes romanticize the past, right? Thinking it was better than what we actually remember. We remember the late nights and the partying, but don't want to remember the hangover the next day, right? <laughs> we remember not being on the up and up, and it was cool, it was edgy, you know, but we don't want to remember when the officer said, watch your head, sir. 
So life certainly wasn't better. I know I can speak for myself that once God saved me, changed me, gave me the right frame of mind, my life became better in every sense of the word. Since God restored me, I have joy that the world didn't give and the world certainly can't take away. My life is better in him. I'm not looking back to what I thought was good, but I'm looking towards what I know is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I've tasted and seen that he truly is good. Amen. But if we are going to remember some things, you know, we need to remember what God has done and what he has promised he will do. He has promised one day he's coming back to get his church. He's promised that. Keep that in your minds and in your hearts. He has promised that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will remain. Keep that in your minds and in your hearts. When everything else may fail, his word will remain. His word will endure. We need to keep that in our minds and in our hearts. But what we need not remember is this. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Your old life, forget about it. Don't dwell on it. Don't give any thought to it. Because look at verse 19. Behold, I am going to do something new. New isn't refurbished. New, my brothers and sisters, is new. Like a brand new car off the lot. Ain't nothing like the smell of a brand new car. Amen. New is new. And that's what God does with us. He takes us from nothing and makes us something beautiful and something new. But our part is we have to walk in newness of life where we aren't going backwards, but moving forward so God can continuously make us new. Amen. So what are things to remember? Because just like we, we pull negative thoughts down, we have to replace it with a godly thought. So what are things to remember? 2 Peter 1, 12 through 15. So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. He is saying, I know you know these things, but it doesn't hurt to be reminded. In fact, it's beneficial. Look at verse 13. I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body. Verse 14. Because I know that I will soon put it aside as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. 15. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, here we go. You will always be able to remember these things. So as Peter is wrapping up his life, he is saying, I want you to remember what you have been taught in truth. We are apostolics and we are blessed people because we know truth. We are firmly, we are firmly established. Some of us came out of the womb speaking in tongues and quoting Acts 2.38. Amen. But yet it's still good to have our memory refreshed. According to Peter, when you remember something fully, it's in you. But sometimes we just need to be reminded, don't go back. Don't live in a negative mindset. Keep your past buried. Think on the goodness of God. Remember, it was with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm that he brought you out. Remember those things. But Peter is not done. 2 Peter 3, 1 uh, through 2. Here we go. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. 
I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. Whew, beautiful verse of scripture. This world will bog us down and weigh on us. But Peter says, remembering what God has said will bring us back to wholesome thinking. Remember what he has done. Remember he is a faithful God. Remember his word will never return void, but it will accomplish what he set it out to perform. Remember he is the God of your salvation. Remember these things, Peter is saying. Although we are one in Christ, we all have many different testimonies and situations where God showed himself strong in our lives. Those moments should be highlight reels in our minds. To use Bible language, those should be memorials in our lives. God tells Joshua in chapter 4, take 12 men from the people, from each tribe a man, and command them, saying, Take twelve stones from here out of the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly, and bring them over with you, and lay them down in the place where you lodge tonight. Verse 6, and I'm paraphrasing the story right here for time. Verse 6, when your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. God poured out a mighty miracle, and he said, I want you to take stones and set them up. And when people ask about it, you will be able to say what happened. This will also be for your family. When your children ask, why are these stones stacked this way? You will remember what I did. If God has ever done something incredible in your life, something supernatural, we ought to keep that in our minds. One way we do that is to write it down. How incredible would that be? You are an elderly lady or man and your grandchildren are struggling with faith and you pull out years of God's answered prayers that you have documented over the years. My goodness. Look at what he did back in 1985. I prayed and God answered. Look at what he did in 1994. Look at this scrapbook of God's amazing grace. Look at these pictures. Look at these testimonies. Amen. We would always remember he is a God who does great things with a love for his people. My goodness, I wish I could have done this earlier, but I just started myself. And it is never too late to document God's goodness and God's grace to set them up as memorials and reminders so we can always remember he never fails. My goodness, I pray this lesson tonight encouraged you here is a brief recap of what we've touched on tonight. That the past is buried. We have a new life in Christ Jesus. We move forward towards the things he has for us. And the only thing that we really want to remember and look back on is what God has spoken and what God has done. Amen. I'm going to pray over you all in dismissal for tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence. God, we thank you for your word. God, we know that you do not want us to look back, but God, you want us to look forward in you, Jesus, that we are no longer defined by what happened to us, God, but now we are defined by what you have done in us and by what you have done through us. God, we want to press forward towards the mark of the high calling of God and move into what you want us to do and move into what you have called us to do, God, for we know that 
that the best is still yet to come, but we don't want to look behind us. We want to look forward in you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, God. I pray that you touch everybody whose ears this word fell upon tonight, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Again, thank you for being with us tonight. I pray this lesson blessed you. I cannot wait to see you all on Sunday. What an awesome time it's going to be. May the Lord bless you tonight in Jesus' name.